When they call it the order of Mike, Mike, one of the two. It's a joint meeting. We're going to uh, call the joint meeting between the council and the commissioners. Uh, Baker Tilly, all three commissioners are here. Yes. So, Wendy, you want to call the roll? And I have all seven council members here. All right. All right, Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, having us here. Uh, the long anticipated uh, waiting with the uh, kind of updating our comprehensive financial report. And uh, this is just a draft report. Uh, uh, Caitlin Chick is with me, a senior manager. She was here a few years ago and helped present this a few years ago. A lot of new faces. Um, but uh, she uh, was really instrumental in putting this together and it has a history with the county as well. So I'll let her go through this. But just as a reminder, you know, it's been a few months since we talked about this. Um, Again, we've done this a couple years for the county. It's kind of a, a tool that the county has used in the past to kind of project the amount of revenues and expenses uh, that you can foresee in the future. Um, I think you'll be able to use this uh, when you do your budget you know, here in the, in the short term. Um, we also want this to be able to be able to use this as you're making decisions, whether it's you know capital projects, um, potential raises, anything like that, and we can kind of use this as you're looking at making those decisions, how that's not going to only impact your balances that you have currently, but going out in the next two or three years. Um, so I say this is a draft because uh, there are some assumptions that we've made in here, and Caitlin's going to kind of go through some of those and some of your projections. And then I think based upon, we, we kind of want this interactive um, as far as the assumptions uh, that we've made. We want you to see if, yeah, we like those assumptions or no, we want to tweak them. If there's some things that you're already thinking about kind of early on in the budget that you might want to see, okay, we're thinking about maybe doing this. If we did that, what does that, how does that impact these numbers? We can incorporate that and then finalize the report for you. And then I say finalize the report, but it's kind of like a living document because things change. Um, you know, people come to you with, with uh, additional appropriations, additional projects. You have things come up through the year. At that time, we may, you may want us to update that as well. So it's kind of like a living document. Um, also, uh, since we talked here last time, there have been some legislative changes. So we've incorporated those in here. Unfortunately, some of those legislative changes have not uh, uh, been kind to, to local government. So we incorporate those, and Caitlin will kind of talk about those as well. So if there's no questions, we'll just kind of kind of go through, start the report. Yeah. Right. So our first few pages, I'm going to jump to page one through three. <laughs> This is a resource for you all that outlines the various funds that we looked at and it includes a description and the uses for those funds. So just a reference, is, especially as you go through your budget process, what funds can be used for what services. Um, and I will talk about maybe some opportunities where you can move some expenditures from fund to fund to maybe help some that are having issues with maybe decreasing cash balances. So um, part of that is based on those uses as well. So that's just a reference um, as we go through there. Um, if we jump to page four, this is the summary of the assumptions Jason mentioned. Um, we have it broken down by receipts and disbursements. Um, the uh, bullet number one is focused on your maximum levy. So that is uh, each for your property tax related funds, which I've outlined here, your general reassessment, Cumbridge, health and cemetery funds. Um, in the past, you've also had a, a building fund um, that used part of that levy as well. Um, but currently, um, these are the ones that you have allocated. Um, one of the legislative changes is a limit on how much that maximum levy can grow for pay 24 and for pay 25. So the legislation is the lesser of 80% of the growth factor or 4%. So in this version, um, we're assuming that it's a 4% growth factor for 2024 and 2025. Uh, it could potentially be less than that, but based on our projections for growth factors, um, we think that 4% would probably be the lesser of the two in the calculation. So that's what's built in currently. Um, this report does go out to 2026 at that time, uh, assuming there's no future legislative changes, and it reverts back to the average of six years of non-farm income. Um, the growth factor would be 5.7% at that time. So that's what we're showing. No, uh, like yeah. the yeah. That's important, I think, for you to realize and also tell department heads and also your constituents because if the law hadn't changed, um, 
we could probably we were projecting more like a four point nine to again a five percent increase. So like for this year, your maximum levy, which again is the max that you can levy from property taxes, as we talked about before, the state tells you this is the max most you can levy, most you can collect from property taxes. That grows a little bit each year for your maximum for levy growth quotient. This year, from twenty two to twenty three, it went up five percent. Um, we were projecting it would go up again five percent for roughly for two thousand twenty four, but because in this new law. They're limiting it to the four percent, so that really reduces the amount that you're going to have available for your budget for 2024. <laughs> so, and the reason they did that was because as you probably have heard, you, you've seen. I think we talked about this before. You know, your property taxes for your home and property went up this year because even if tax rates stayed pretty level, both assessed values went up. So that was one reason, or one reason why the legislators tried to limit the amount of growth going forward to help ease future increases for the next two years. So good for taxpayers, but again, on this side of the table, it doesn't help you try to fund your budget going forward. So 21 uh, through 2023, that's based on your budget order and, and approved levies for those funds. Um, for your general fund, um, utilizing about 81% of, of the levy. And for 24 through 2026, we just assumed in this draft that the allocation remains the same. Um, for 2023, you know, you guys have shifted levy in the past. You could see your levy for reassessment was very small in 22 and then increased it for 23 in order to cover expenses. So very common when you go through the budget process to move that levy around in order to fund the services needed or utilize cash balances where they're available. So um, we'll talk through that when we get to each of those funds. Um, but currently we have it set up where the allocations have remained the same moving forward. The uh, next bullet point number two, uh, the circuit breaker credits um, for the historical years, those are based on actuals. And then we did build in a little bit of an increase in circuit breaker losses over the upcoming years. Again, just due to those increasing assessed values um, that we're seeing throughout the state to be hopefully, we think those are conservative circuit breaker numbers. Um, levy excess shortfall, you'll see those under property tax related funds. Um, those are just uh, a correction for how much property taxes you actually collected after the circuit breaker law. So just trues that up. Um, it will represent delinquencies or things like that or late payments. Um, four is the miscellaneous revenues that are linked to all the funds that receive property taxes. Your excise tax, um, uh, FIT financial institution tax, and commercial vehicle excise taxes. And uh, you can see the percentages of levy uh, that are tied to each of those um, for the funds that receive property taxes, which also includes your CUNY Capital Development Fund, which does receive property taxes, but that's a rate-driven fund. So it's outside of that maximum levy that we talked about in the beginning. Um, local income taxes are based on certified distributions, and we assume no growth um, to be conservative in, in those numbers as well. Next page. Uh, motor vehicle highway distributions um, are based on uh, historical actuals. And again, we assume um, no growth. And then for seven, same for local road and street distributions based on historical actuals with no growth <coughs> as well. Um, and same thing with miscellaneous revenues unless it's footnoted um, for a certain reason. And then earnings on investments and deposits, that's going to be based on the um, cash balance that's being held in that account. So if it's an account that is seeing a decrease in cash balance, we've calculated the earnings on, uh, on investments and deposits to decrease as well. Um, so those are all of our revenue-related assumptions. Um, you see a trend. They're all very conservative. We don't build growth in, um, and we try to be conservative on the circuit breaker losses as well. So, um, The next set of assumptions are our disbursements. So for 2023, those are based on the approved budgets. Um, so this is important because um, what's in here currently assumes that you spend the entirety of every budget that was approved for each fund. And in many of your funds, you've not historically spent the entire budget. So we have some information at the bottom of, of those pages as well. Um, so when you see the summary of ending cash balances, some of them are going negative. But again, that's assuming that they spend their entire um, appropriation. And um, moving forward for 24 through 26, um, we built in a 3% growth um, for all expenditures um, except for capital outlays. We hold that constant um, for that time. And then any funds that didn't have a budget, um, we just based on historical spending. 
And we did also include encumbrances and additional appropriations um, through, um, I believe, the end of May um, that were approved. So if there's any recently approved, they might not be in here. So those are all the assumptions we have. So we go to page six. This is the summary of um, the actual and projected ending cash balances for all the funds that we looked at for 21 through 2026. And you can see, as I mentioned, um, a, a downward trend for um, a few of them. And th those are some of the assumptions we can change. If there's some that are consistently underspending their budget, we can update the report to reflect um, you know, more consistent with the historical spending. Um, or um, you know, this is the, the most conservative version. We like to show kind of worst case scenario. So if we <coughs> jump to page seven, the remaining schedules uh, for the most part are each of the funds individually in detail. Uh, page seven is the general fund, which has the most line items associated with it. Um, so we'll probably talk about this one in the most detail. And then if we have questions about any of the subsequent funds, please feel free to interrupt. Um, the first section is our operating receipts. So lines, uh, line two is your property tax levy, and then you have our circuit breaker losses, and then that levy excess shortfall to true up the actual uh, receipts of property taxes. And then following that is the section on the miscellaneous revenues. And then um, lines eight and nine are your um, income tax receipts. And then 10 through 17 are more miscellaneous revenues. Um, just want to point out in line 13, um, other grants and distributions has a, your CARES money included in it. So that's why you see that uh, bump there and then the decrease for 2022. And we assumed it would stay at the 2022 level moving forward. Um, and then if you go down to uh, line 21, there's your operating disbursements. Again, 21 and 22 are actuals and then 23 um, assumes you spend the entire approved budget, which was eight, around 8.8 .8 million. And then there was um, an additional appropriations of about almost 150,000. And then we shifted some expenditures from the riverboat fund. So this is something we wanted to discuss um, into uh, line 24, other services and charges. And that's why we see the line 28 total operating disbursements at 9.2. So. Um, in the riverboat fund, there was uh, over 300000 budgeted for share of pension, and that fund ended 2022 with $0, so just kind of depending on the revenue that comes in for this year, which is around $75,000. So um, we could show it either way, but we, instead of showing the riverboat fund just going negative, you know, $300,000 each year, we moved those pension expenses into the general fund. So we wanted your feedback on if you spend that entire appropriation each year or what the share of pension costs um, are really needed to come from the general fund. Um, Could we pull that out, that would save, you know, this ending balance in 2026 would probably be zero instead of negative a million if we pulled out that $250,000 for those four years. But we just wanted your feedback on those pension expenses. And that might be something we have to look into. But yeah. So I wanted to point that out because it does show it. Um, in line 38, on um, each schedule, you'll see an increase-decrease line, and that's uh, illustrating the amount of cash you're either adding to the cash balance for each fund or that you need to utilize, assuming all these expenditures and revenues come to fruition. Um, so you can see for 2023, if you did not need to fund uh, that pension cost of $250,000, it would be pretty close to, to break even, a little bit negative, or a little bit use of the cash balance, but... Um, not as much. Um, and then I also want to point out on line uh, 43, we have your operating balance percentage. So that is the amount of, of, of cash on hand as a percentage of your disbursements. So it tells you how much money you have to operate just on hand. So 15% means that you can operate for about two months on just the cash that you have in the bank. So that's usually the minimum balance that we recommend. Um, and, and working on, on building those reserves. So at the end of 22, you're right on target, pretty close to 15%. And then again, 23, the information we've included assumes spending the entire budget and also that additional share of pension costs are, are illustrated there. So um, a, a decrease is projected for 2023, assuming all that comes true. That yeah. is 
in, in layman's terms, I guess you call it. That is what we, that, that's the additional appropriation. Uh, oh, that, okay. That's where we get our additional appropriations from for each fund. Isn't that correct? Your operating balance. Yes. I mean, you, you've got your budget for, right. you know, whichever, you know, agency, but, you know, department. Mm -hmm. And then, well, is it department or fund? The appropriations are usually by fund, but they're usually broken out by what department's requesting it and what line item. Okay. Yeah. So, so when they That's ask for an additional appropriation, they go into we go into that fifteen percent excess mm -hmm. and give them that if we decide to give them that. Right. That's what that's for. Right. Yeah. So okay. Basically, on the end of 2023, if these revenues come to fruition as we're projecting here, that you spend 100% of your budget plus the 250000 for pension, you'll have $923,000 remaining at the end of the year. So any time anyone comes to you for an additional appropriation, you'll be eating into that $923,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And so that, that's for general fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So that's where I get my questions. Is it is it funds or is it departments? And and so I won't I won't you know bug you down with it, but, but that's I, that's that's where I get uh, a question about yeah. additional preparations. I mean, because if if a department had, just I'll ask a question for a bit. If a department head comes in and says I need an additional appropriation, so will that go? Uh, will, will that be from a fund? And, I mean, like if you come to say I need additional appropriation, it's the unit. So we go to the general fund and get that? I think you guys they, decide yeah. where you want to take yeah. it. From. We decide where we go. Okay, so it's not just tacked on to the departments. So there's the, within the general fund, there's many departments, mm -hmm. but departments related to public safety can also receive funding from your lit public safety fund. Um, if they're EMS or 911 related, you have a 911 fund, an ambulance fund. So depending on, kind of back to those first few pages that outlines the uses of the funds, mm -hmm. depending on what department it is, they could be requesting an additional appropriation from various funds, okay. not necessarily the general fund. I There's see. certain, you know, like the auditor's office, that would be the general fund. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, 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 it's not, <coughs> I guess it's not department related in general. It's not really. For there. Use. Maybe it's, it's like it's, use it's, it's, it's in a fund that a department draws from. Mm -hmm. I suppose the way I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's kind of. I mean, as Caitlin said, you know, some funds are very restrictive. You can only use the money for certain mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. Other are more flexible, like your general fund. Mm -hmm. So, if depending on what the request is, that might dictate where the money can come from based upon what the fund can be used for and then also where he has the cash balance. <laughs> so uh, another question I'll let you go. Um, if, if there's a, if somebody comes in and, and requests an additional appropriation and they don't, uh, and, and we don't think there's enough money to uh, uh, you know, uh, grant that request, can we switch it over to someplace else and take that or does it have to be moved by a meeting or a motion or a or, or a uh, you know advertisement or something like that uh, just like i think any additional corporation has to have a public hearing and, and okay. whether it's in the have a general fund or a different fund we we can we can take it out of other funds as long as it qualifies as long as it's within that the, the rules for that that fund that can be spent out of that fund yeah okay. in general Mm -hmm. And you have money in that. And we have yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I have I have counties that uh, which I, my goal is for you to use this in the same place. But they bring this, you know, once we finalize this and the, and with your correct assumptions, they bring this with them to every meeting for that very reason. Because if someone comes and says, you know, we need X, Y, and Z fund this and need the initial appropriation, you can pull this out and say, can we afford it? Or which kind of fund can we afford from? <laughs> I like what you said first. <laughs> What's that? I like what you said first. We can't afford it. Can't yeah. afford it. Does anyone have any other questions on the general fund? This one yeah, is, is it, is it uh, uh, the last question? Is it going into the negative? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, yes. um, sorry, line 41, yes. and you'll see this on every page as well. There's the ending cash and cash equivalents. So, this is 
where we project your cash on hand to be at the end of the year. So, as I, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. And, and yeah. Bad. yeah, proceeds are bad. And that's why Caitlin mentioned earlier about the two hundred fifty thousand dollars that was budgeted and worked was a riverboat. Riverboat. Yes. Riverboat. We weren't sure if that was a real expense that you're anticipating. Um, we assumed it was. That's why we moved it over here to show that you're going to have to fund it from some other source because Riverboat can't sustain it. If that's a, not a real, not going to say it's inflated, but if it's not a real expense, we could reduce that out of here. Mm -hmm. And then that was going to make this not as negative or maybe a positive for a few more years. Okay. So that's something, we, as Kayla mentioned, we wanted to ask you. Uh, and maybe you want to keep it in there as kind of, you know, to be conservative and give us an extra flexibility. Um, Is that money that's coming from the riverboat? It's an appropriation. So in your budget for the riverboat, you had a, a line item for share of pension costs. Um, but the amount of revenue in the riverboat fund cannot fund those pension costs. So for most of the funds, you'll see they're going negative. We didn't really move anything else besides that one, but because it was pension related, just wanted to show that you could fund it um, if um, and where you could fund it from for a short period of time. But to Jason's point, if it's not really 250,000, maybe it's only 50,000. We will not make that change so that we can show, you know, being positive for the long I've never heard anyone mention a riverboat fund. I know we get we, don't. we get some funding yeah. from the riverboat, right. but it's yeah. minimal. I mean, yeah. but yeah. and it varies too. It's not something yeah. that you should usually budget into your in, in your general budget because it's discretionary, right? I don't know where this number would be or why yeah. it would be there. Yeah. So that's what was approved just under Gateway, the LGF budget for the Riverboat Fund was the, the pension cost. So maybe it's double, maybe it's double um, counted for. Maybe you already have it budgeted into your general fund and had no intention of paying out a riverboat, but no idea. Somebody, somebody has a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bring up line 45, I know it's. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, and then on line 45, so like I mentioned, um, a lot of our assumptions assume you spend all of your budget. Um, so for the funds that have a budget um, on Gateway, we included uh, for the historical years what you actually spent compared to your budget that was approved. So for on line 45 for the general fund, you spent 105% of the budget in 2021 and 97% in 2022. Um, for some of the other funds, it's in the 80s consistently, so you, we know that you probably are not going to spend it in its entirety. The general fund, though. Um, we have spent the majority of it for the last two years. So, so kind of adding <laughs> to your question and comment, if you look at line 26, you've already, you know, approved $146,000 of additional appropriations. So if you were to spend 100% of your budget, you've already spent $146,000 of additional appropriations, you're already, you'll be over 100% for the year. So that's where I think it is key to be mindful of the additional appropriations that you approve. Mm -hmm. Um, because as you said, it does eat into your into your cash balance. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take a lot of here. Because, so we're, we're um, here's the line for your budget, and the additional appropriations are down here. So if you if you approve any additional appropriation, then you're over your budget. Mm -hmm. If you spend the entirety of your budget. If you spend the entirety of your budget. Yeah. Jason, don't you don't you set it or your recommendation's always been for each budget, for each department to, have, to be at least fifteen percent. So leave at the end of the year fifteen percent in your budget. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that it roll you always are bringing money back to the general fund at the end of the year. Well the fifteen percent uh, that's like that line forty three that I think you're referring to is at the end of the year, you want to have a, a minimum of a fifteen percent operating balance. So I guess what I'm what I'm saying is is that if you have a budget for say a uh, court's office or something, and at the end of the year you want you don't want them to spend all their money. You you want them to, but that money is not is that money the right. same money you're talking here that that's going to be in the general funds, or is this money that's already going to be additional money that it's already budgeted. It's not in a general fund. It's already budgeted to the department. If that department has money that's left over, that goes back at the end of the year and starts recouping. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you said once before that you you put in a, a buffer so that everybody doesn't 
use all their money. Yeah. They always have a cushion at yeah. the end of the year. Well, and I know you just hired, uh, well, just signed the contract for budget or for Paige to help you with your budget. Uh, she'll tell you probably that a lot of counties will, um, uh, you know, talk to the department heads and, and say, here's our budget. And then you try to make it work within your revenue. The way it should work is say, here's our revenue. We need to make our budget work within our revenue. That's exactly so that's kind of going to your point, I think. If you were bringing in, you know, we're showing, you know, $8.7 million in revenue next year. One way to look at it, okay, we're showing in a balance of $411,000. We want a million dollars. So we need to back out $500,000 from that revenue and say, okay, we only have $8.2 million in our general fund. That's we need to we need to structure our budget based upon that. That's exactly what right. a lot of counties have done is say, okay, we have nine point three million dollars of expenses. Let's make our budget work, knowing that you don't have that much revenue. Mm -hmm. So Paige is going to make you look at it from a different perspective, like, <laughs> you exactly right. like you would your home. Exactly, like you would your home. You don't want to you don't want to just go give give them five percent. Let's move on down the road. Mm -hmm. You don't right. have that five percent, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what this this a lot of counties like you said you know if you want to get you know three percent let's say because all of our expenses are based upon three percent increase you can do that for next year but in 2025 you're going to be negative well we need to be saving now so yeah. so. so good points which we did start last year <laughs> we did start yep um, but that's exactly right. I mean, you you said exactly what I've always said is that, that, and it's not my job; it's the council's job. But I mean, their job is to to set a budget for each department, and and those elected officials need to live within that budget. So it's not that hey, I want a Christmas tree or I want a new car or I want whatever. I mean, you have to live within your means. So it's like you do at home. So. All right, I'm going to go on page eight. Um, is another one of your maximum levy funds. So that's our reassessment fund. So set up the same way as the general fund um, schedule is. Um, line two, we have your property tax levy, as I mentioned, um, was lower historically and then you increased it um, up uh, in 2023. Um, so that was great use of the, that cash balance that you had on hand. So um, down on line 25, um, the operating balance percentages, you could see in 21, you had over 164% operating balance. So, um, you know, that's exactly what we would have recommended is, you know, moving the levy out of there, using some of that cash, because this is a restricted fund. It could only be used for reassessment related expenses. So, um, freeing up that levy to go to the general fund so it could be used for more things um, and, and utilizing this cash. Um, until you got to a point where you felt like you needed to move it back up up this year. So um, on line 18, the total operating disbursements, um, you can see for 2023, again, we're showing the full budget, which is around 300,000, um, which is a little bit of an increase of what was spent actually in 2022. Um, if you go to line 27, that budget to actual disbursement, you can see in 22, you way, way underspent your budget in that fund. Um, so even though this is showing that you'll be negative by 2026, I think based on historical spending, um, it'll probably continue to, to um, be in the positive at that time. So this is one where I think it, we could adjust this. Mm -hmm. As Caitlin said, in 21 you only spent 90% of your budget. Last year only spent 60%. If you continue down that path where you spend 69%, your balances are gonna look much better. If it's it's really just 60% going forward, then your balance is going to be very healthy. And then you can maybe move some of that levy, you know, that $230,000, we can reduce that and then move that back to your general fund. Mm -hmm. So that's something we would kind of your input because we did see the big increase from 22 to 23 and other services and charges. We didn't know if that's where you just kind of, I don't say padded your budget, but maybe you included, you know, equipment or something for one year. But that's just a one-time expense, so maybe next year we can push it back down closer to 200000 So that's something where we would need your guidance on what to assume, and then we can make adjustments to the levy side, too, if that makes sense. All right. Page 9 is your health fund, another levy-related fund. Um, on line 2, your property taxes. Um, are again based on the budget order, then um, 
building <coughs> in that maximum levy growth factor. Um, if we just jump down to line 27, your budget to actual history in this fund um, was uh, underspending in 2021 and pretty close to spending the budget in 22. Um, but the, the budget looks like it maybe went up a little bit for 23, uh, close to $500,000. Um, so um, in the past, you were able to actually add to your cash balance. So if you look at line 20, that increase, decrease, anytime those are positive, that's actually where you're adding money to the cash on hand. Um, so you have done that historically. So this is another one where if we, um, maybe we increased uh, due to new personnel or, or maybe it was just um, plans to add personnel that didn't come to fruition, um, you know, we can adjust that moving forward so that it doesn't um, look unnecessarily negative out into the future if that's the case. Line 10 is your cemetery fund. Um, won't spend too much time on this, um, but it's a small part of your uh, levy. Um, you have very healthy operating balances, um, and we project that the, you know, you're not going to spend more than your budget in this fund. So, Page 11 is your cumulative bridge fund. Um, this one is another, uh, I think maybe the last fund uh, for us to look at is a part of the maximum levy. Um, this is a fund that has a, a very healthy uh, operating balance um, in 2022 you ended the year with over a thousand um, percent operating balance so this would be a fund that we would recommend moving some levy to help the general fund um, there is uh, restrictions these funds can only be used related to bridge projects um, so if we are maybe working towards accumulating funds for an upcoming bridge project then um, you know we would want to keep building that balance but if there's not a capital plan um, related to bridges or, or one that's coming up, there would be an opportunity to move levy out of this fund to help relieve the general fund as well. So I'm not sure if there is a, a bridge project. We're working on it. Yeah. Okay. There's always, always a, a lot of bridges. Yeah. There's so always a bridge project. project. Okay. So you can, only, you can only buy bridge stuff out of this? this? Yes. But it's a part of the maximum levy, so you can shift levy around if there's not bridge expenses that are upcoming but if there are then not other stuff that. besides bridge stuff um we have the, the specifics but it's related to bridge projects yeah oh. hmm. all right we so. have problems with that with bridges uh, yeah both <laughs> <laughs> now if you have equipment that is used around bridges you can most definitely use that like mower mowing do you mow yes, bridges, it's it's bridges. It's 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 bridges. Yeah. you do i see so we're buying you can talk about it, you can laugh about it. We're buying equipment out of that. We, we had it approved. And we checked with Papa. Give me just a second. How are you going to do it? All right. Let's All right. Move on. Yeah. Okay. That's for another time. Yeah, this, is for, this is for the, <laughs> the budget. Let me get this on. Let me get this on. All right. I'm tired. You're done. Hey. Randy. I'm going to go on to the building fund. Sorry. Uh, Sorry about that. Um, the Keem building fund, um, like I mentioned, I think at one point in time you were utilizing it as part of your maximum levy, and you still just have some funds left in there. That could be, it has a restricted use that we've outlined in that summary sheet, but just some money you could use for building related uh, capital projects. So just to kind of empty out that, and that fund. My empty out and yeah. close it, so it's just one less fun to. But, and that was my next yeah. question. Yeah. Like, so is that something that we could? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't build a shed with that. <laughs> <laughs> that might, might be, be something about that you might want to work with the paint on to yeah. okay. close that out and one less one to take a word out. So, page 13 is your Kim Capital <laughs> Development Fund. So, that's our rate driven fund. Um, currently, it uh, looks very healthy. Um, the revenues coming into it are about. Um, you know, are more than what we have budgeted, um, adding to the cash balance every year. Uh, but the rate right now is uh, 0 0.0182. Uh, you can increase it to a maximum of 0 0.0333, um, which we estimate would bring in about 126,000 uh, additional dollars after circuit breaker losses. Um, and this is a, another opportunity where you could move some expenses that qualify from the general fund into the capital development fund. Um, if uh, often people use it for IT services and IT related contracts, 
the CCD fund. So um, if you have any of those in your general fund, um, you could increase that rate and then utilize that extra revenue to help free up, move some expenses out of the general fund into this fund. So that's one where counties always ask, okay, when we're all said and done, they ask, okay, where how can we generate more revenue? And as we've talked about before, you really have very few opportunities. It's either to increase your income tax or you haven't had your max on your team cap development. So this is one of the other few really areas where you can raise your tax because like we talked about, your general fund, your reassessment, those are all already at your maximum level. You can't raise those more than what the state says. This one, since it's outside, you can go to that three cents and can get that extra 100 points. So that's just, it's too late to do it for 2024, but it's something that you may want to think about that you look at your budget for 2025. Would you say if they raise it three cents, it'd be? Um, it'd be uh, 126000 additional dollars if you increase it to the max, um, which is 0 0.0333. It would be a 0 0.0151 increase. 0 0.0151. Well, and a half. Yeah. All right. So page 14 and 15 kind of go together because they're the highway fund and the restricted fund, highway restricted fund. Um, so as you know, you get your motor vehicle highway distribution that you see on line two, and that's split 50-50 um, between the highway fund and the restricted fund. And so um, currently, um, if you go down to line 23, you've historically underspent those budgets. Um, you approve just one budget and then kind of allocate the restricted expenditures that are allowed to that restricted fund um, that are they have to be specifically related to construction or reconstruction. Um, so just based on what's budgeted, um, historically you've way underspent that um, amount. So for 2023, again, assuming you spent the whole budget, you can see it going negative, but um, we wouldn't anticipate that that's actually the case. And if you flip to page 15, you'll see there's a, a surplus in the restricted fund. Um, pretty close to the, the loss on the prior page to where it would break even almost. Um, but this is a, a, another fund um, that mostly you know, people spend what they receive on the projects. And I know some some communities have issues um, utilizing the restricted funds or, or get frustrated with having to split it 50-50 between the two. Um, but that did not change during the legislative session, so it's still the same restrictions. We'll have to look at the at the highway uh, fund because we we we've had trouble with equipment like we just had and uh, we we haven't given the uh, supervisor enough money for equipment in the budget for like an equipment line uh -huh. and so uh, we probably need to do that something like that and so that'll make those numbers different mm -hmm. in my opinion mm -hmm. and so. Uh, It'll make it look like it'll, it'll make it look worse, I suppose, on the budget if we add that line to it in, 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 in the budget hearings and stuff. Yeah. But I think that that type of stuff needs to be looked at. So there'll be there'll be there'll be pretty substantial amount of money that we would probably need to put in that. Yeah, and if, if there's a way that that equipment is anyway related to directly to a reconstruction construction project, you do have you end of 2022 with 720 thousand dollars on hand in the restricted fund. So, but the highway <laughs> fund has a pretty low balance of only 120 thousand at the end of 2022. So, yeah. I, I can't remember that. a few years back in the highway. We get, we get, they, they came back from the state and said we had to change it, or they changed it for us or something. Uh, it needs to be changed. I mean, it, was, it was too low or something. Something's wrong with it. And they tweaked, they tweaked the highway fund a number of times, even like with restricted and unrestricted. Sometimes it was combined and made us split it out. Up. So, yeah. And Paige will, during the budget process, uh, she'll, work on estimating that highway distribution. Usually there's more information around budget time that's released by the state on what to anticipate. So hopefully it'll go up, but this is just based on historical to be conservative. 
So I'm going to jump to page 16, which is uh, Local Road and Street, which is uh, similar to Highway. We have the Local Road and Street distribution um, with some other grants and other um, reimbursement revenues included um, based on historical expenditures. Um, <laughs> look at line 14, 21 and 22, you're able to add to your cash balance in these funds. Um, and on line 21, you can see you've slightly underspent the budget um, in the past. So uh, we are still projecting if you spent the entire budget um, with growth included, you would still end 2026 with almost $250,000. So no problem. With you. We're looking at our income tax related funds. So uh, page 17 is your public safety, um, which does have restricted um, expenses it has to be related to obviously public safety uses. Um, if you go to line 17, uh, our total operating disbursements um, for 2023 um, is a little bit higher than last year. There were encumbrances and an additional appropriation um, in this fund as well. Um, but you can see on line 10, the personal services went up a little bit in the budget for 23, and that's um, causing line 19 to utilize some of your cash balance that you had in that fund. And then on line 26, you can see you have historically overspent this budget in this fund. So if that budget in 23 does come to fruition and is needed moving forward, we're showing you'd be negative at the end of 2024. Let me uh, yeah. go through real quick. I'm, I'm getting them. Mm -hmm. messed up here. Uh, <laughs> typical bit. But on, on your line 26, it budget to actual disbursements percentages. Yes. If that's over 100%, that means we're spending over budget. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. well, I, I thought the, I thought a few yeah. pages back we had over a thousand, and it was a good thing. Maybe that was different. Line. Like that. that was line 24. We had operating balance percentage. Okay. So so the, the, the okay. Yeah. That means you had. Yeah. Thank you. So this is one fund that we should probably be mindful of you know look you know maybe in a couple months look and see where the balance is because this is one that could just become negative because this is when we do some additional appropriations from throughout the year so that's when we would really be mindful of looking at the other thing that and i didn't mention this in the general fund but i we do this for randolph county and i do it for the city of winchester it's in randolph county the mayor there knew just from the economy one of his biggest concerns and assumptions that we made is if you look at line two public safety and tax, we kept that flat and it has been growing across the state and across your county as well as you can see in 2021 it was 2.2 million 2022 went up to 2 million 241 this year up went 2 million point three million the mayor just knew because of the you know businesses in the city that it had the income levels, he was afraid the income tax was going down. And we actually did look at the returns for the last four months, and it, it does look like for Randolph County, their income tax might go down 1% in 2024. So that's the other reason. This one, I'm, I'm, we, we need to be careful about that. And I don't know how, what your sense is on the economy and salaries in Scott County, but since this is all income taxes, you know, it's very uh, fickle with the economy. So, and this being as tight as it is in the trend, we definitely want to uh, pay close attention to this one. What all does the red public safety cover? So, the basic public safety. I'm <laughs> yeah. Basically, so anything that's public safety related, operating in capital. <clears throat> There's the HIV um, money to pay for the inmates' HIV drugs come out of this lit safety county share. But that's separate revenue. That's a that's it's a separate we, yeah. That's a separate fund okay. and separate revenue, and that's not in here. We didn't look at that. One. Okay, I just yeah. I didn't know if it was all lumped in yep. together. Yeah. Now the public safety, that's all local income tax. Okay. That are paid by the residents in the county. The next page, eighteen, is your special purpose uh, income tax, which is uh, produces related to the jail. Um, Similar to the prior page, uh, line two is our, the current income taxes that were certified and are receiving for 23, we held that constant, um, a few other miscellaneous revenues. And then um, you have your operating disbursements, um, around 800,000 for 2023, which is a little bit higher than the prior year. 
Um, you have historically spent a little bit more than what you budgeted out of this fund. Um, and then what I want to uh, note on line 19, this fund uh, does have a bond payment that comes out of it. It's your uh, lease rental bonds of 2014. So we have that debt service payment built in. Um, for 2023, we are projecting that you're going to add a little bit to the cash balance. If you spend the entire budget, make that debt service payment, we receive all the revenue that we're estimating. Um, and then projecting that forward, uh, still having a healthy cash balance at the end of 2026 of uh, almost $1.3 million at the end of 2026. So why does it show that it's budget to actual disbursements of like 160 or 111 yeah. percent? Yeah, I guess to clarify on that is in in the situation where you just aren't budgeting nearly as much revenue as you're coming in, um, it is possible to still add to your cash balance but exceeding your budget. If okay. that makes sense, so probably when um, we this at that time there probably just wasn't as many expenses around the jail. And then when the money started to come in, then adding to the budget over time. Um, but yeah, so just to clarify the budget. more in the last few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your budget, you can exceed your budget while also still adding to your cash balance. It just depends on if, you, if you're budgeting, like break even to your revenue or not. If you're budgeting less than your revenue amount, then in, like in this situation, yeah. both can be true. <laughs> yeah, this is a little unique because of the debt service payment. Right. That too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, page 19 is um, your ambulance service. Let's see. Wow, Wages are the Well, if you jump down to, well, so I guess on the revenues on line two, we have the emergency medical service fees, um, and we just held that constant. Um, based on the actual received in 2022, and then the various other miscellaneous receipts. And then and the operating disbursements on line 15, the total for 2023, so the budget that was approved, uh, there was a small additional appropriation, but um, is almost $2 million, which is a large increase from 2022. So 2022 spent almost $1.2 million, which was about 94% of its budget. So. It uh, still seems like the budget went up quite a bit, so I don't know if there was maybe new EMS hired or new um, ambulance employees hired. That would be a late appropriation of almost a million dollars? Yes, so we we took his entire budget out of out of lit. Yes. Removed it. Pretty much self-funded now. Yeah. 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 Yes. So what was yes. budgeted for him went away. Yes. And he's pretty much self-funded. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so it wasn't. Published. We'll have to doctor those numbers up because he is no, actually no, no, doing no, very well. Yeah. 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 You can fix them. <laughs> Talk about correctly. doctoring any numbers. Quite an attorney. Fix them correctly <laughs> to where because actually his money is quite different now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can't. I'm the attorney. Do you have an extra I'm copy of your chairman? Yeah. Yeah. Finances? That up. You got financial. That's like yeah, okay. I could update this based yeah, on year to date revenue too. too for oh, if, if it's there, there, there is no such thing as free government. This is beautiful. Okay. Well, we can update the revenues on here so that that looks more big. Yes. Update. Yes. Is that better? <laughs> yes, that's much better than doctor. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the doctor, you get an update. Cook the, you cook update? the book. No. <laughs> I get a check out. You still want to hear manipulate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or second books. Second set of books. Yeah. So, was, so everything was taken. So that lit public safety budget, which is seems a little bit higher yeah. than 2022, all the ambulances out of there, those increases were other mm -hmm. things. Okay. Yeah. We took, you know, so we took him out of lit and we moved the sheriffs into lit, out, okay. of, out of general. We okay. moved him into lit. Well, and, you know, the lit, like I said, doesn't look very healthy, but that special purpose, you know, that can be used for the debt plus any jail related expenses in his camp. So that was pretty healthy. So you can move some expenses from somewhere else to that one. But as you, Caitlin, showed, it's going to negative a little bit this year. Mm -hmm. So that can't. Yeah, it's hurt forever, right? But at least short term, it could be a short term solution. Okay. All right. Well, we'll update that. The schedule. Um, <laughs> Twenty is the uh, statewide nine one one fund. Um, this fund, um, we have our uh, receipts online too, just held constant. 
and the budget for 2023 was about 540,000. On line 20, if you look at that budget to actual disbursement, historically way underspent the budget um, in this fund. So um, we are projecting we spent the entire budget, you've done the year with almost $40,000, but um, assuming that that likely is not the case. Um, so that's where, as these, where you historically spent the budget, like so here you spent 86%, 89%. You may want us to assume that you only right. spent 90% going forward. If that's the change you want us to make, we can do that for you in the final report. Okay. Similar to the other funds that you maybe it's worth it's been. Uh, if, if we if we could do something like that, uh, take for granted that we'd spent 80 percent of it, 85 percent of whatever budget like you just talked about. So if we if we went into the next year's budget, uh, you know, uh, projection, could we assume uh, to leave that? Uh, as is and have a 15 percent operating balance like just know you're not going to actually spend it well i mean i don't know exactly what i'm trying to i mean can we, yeah that gets carried over to the next year and 15 percent would carry yeah <clears throat> yeah so we could just i mean we could actually we could leave the numbers the same uh, as, a, as a kind of i guess a little risk we don't know what we're going to spend all right well you see it's, it's, it's a trend not Page 21 is the uh, community corrections um, project income. So this is used for the operation of de deferral and pre-trial pre diversion programs. Um, so we have the receipts associated with, with those uh, programs at the top, held constant. Um, this is similar to the prior page on line uh, 22. You can see you underspend the budget in this fund as well. Um, even if you spend the entire budget, um, we're showing that you'll stay positive until 2025. Uh, but this is another one we could uh, just adjust it down <coughs> to spending even 90% of the budget. So page 22, this is the riverboat fund. Um, this can be used for um, any legal purpose, um, similar to the general fund. Um, so on line uh, six, you can see um, this fund only is projected to bring in around seventy thousand um, dollars right now. So again, this was just again the pension expense that was approved and uh, appropriated in the budget um, that we moved to the general fund. So we are still showing that. You'll pay the uh, seventy thousand that you can out of this fund, um, but we moved that remaining pension cost to the general fund. Um, Twenty three is just uh, another fund that you can maybe uh, close out. Um, you have some money in the hospital reserve fund, twenty six, almost twenty seven thousand dollars. So it's a fund with no activity, but it could just use it towards a project. Yeah, so that might be another one. Just. Some of that you have in the general fund paid right. out of here and close this fund out. Uh, page 24 is your rainy day fund. Um, no activity, um, but about $1.6 million on hand. And then our last schedule is uh, your TIF account. I have a question yeah. on rainy day. Can, yeah. can we in this, this maybe a question, but can we invest rainy day funds? Mm -hmm. Can we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, our firm helps with investment. There's a, a state fund called Indiana Trust. And I mean, with the bad thing with interest rates rising, there's one positive. Mm -hmm. uh, you can invest funds at a lot higher right now. And I was talking to our okay. investment through the Indiana Trust, which is very liquid. It, it's earning like over 5%. So if you know you're not going to plan on touching this, I would definitely look into investing in it. Well, I mean, historically, we haven't right. touched it. Yeah. yeah. So, like I said, it's very liquid. So if, if you if emergency did come up, it's not like a CD where if you you know have to cash in your CD, you're getting the penalty. Any interest is very liquid. So that's something that I would, mm -hmm. I would look into. And it doesn't even have to be here if you have you know if you're, if you've got a healthy general fund balance or other. If there's other funds that you have that you know you aren't going to touch for some time. I'd look at investing that as well. <laughs> All right, our last fund is the uh, TIF fund. 
So line two, the property taxes, um, those are uh, based on our TIP estimates um, from our most recent uh, TIP report that we provided to the Scott County Redevelopment Commission. And um, on line uh, 11, uh, we have a budget of $75,000 um, for other services and charges. Um, that was just what was approved in the budget um, for 2023. We just um, grew that by that 3% moving forward. And then if you jump down to line 21, there is uh, outstanding debt um, against the TIF. Um, it is the economic development revenue bonds of 2014. We have that debt service shown here. And then on line 25, you can see even with the debt service being paid, a, a large um, uh, estimated increase to the cash balance in this fund each year, projecting to end 2026 with over $4 million. Um, this fund d does have restricted uses. Um, it can only be used in serving or benefiting the TIF area. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do that, but um, it is restricted by that. Uh, it was bonds for Austin and Fry Hawk. Uh, they purchased their own bonds as well to help provide incentive for their last expansion. And then the last three page or four pages are just some more reference information. So page 26 is a, a summary of all those actual to budget um, disbursement percentages that I included on the fund specific pages, but this is just all of it in, in one place. Um, and you can actually see the budgeted amounts for those prior years as well. Um, and then on page 27 is a summary of your local income taxes. Um, so for currently you have a 0.16 property tax relief income tax. Um, for your expenditure bucket, you have 1% certified shares and 0.75% public safety. And then you have that jail uh, special purpose lit for 0.25. So from that expenditure rate bucket, you have 1.75%. There's a maximum of 2.5% that can come out of uh, those different allocations. So you do still have the ability to increase your income taxes by 0.75% in, in those buckets. Um, and just some legislative changes that occurred. If you do want to change your income taxes, and it's one of these buckets that impact multiple taxing units. Um, you have to make those changes now by August 1st, um, and you have to notify all the units that would be impacted by those changes. Um, and there is also a new 0.2% um, rate that's available for to pay for uh, county court costs. Um, that's an option as well, but it, I think it's fall under the expenditure it's, rate. Budget, it's state right? judicial expenses oh, okay. or staff expenses only. Support, okay. Nobody really knows about that. It's like been in effect for 12 days, but right. I've heard about it yeah. endlessly in Floyd County <laughs> and had big arguments over it. But Floyd I did talk County. to Senator Holderman. Yeah. Which county? Uh, no, Floyd I'm not their, their attorney. I'm Scott County's attorney. I'm from Floyd County. Okay. <laughs> it's been a big to do, but there's also this probably know more than CMS I know about that. Oh, yeah. About yeah. 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 He just woke up. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what? Did it affect me? He's like, 2%. <laughs> <laughs> there was a suggestion that uh, oh, the, we, the we, the county, uh, that uh, implemented the 0.25, uh, which is the 0.25. Special purpose. There was, uh, there was a, a statement made, some of the statement that the, that money goes to the county and the two cities. Now the 0.2 all goes to the county. Okay. What goes to the city? The, uh, certified the certified shares in the public safety. Okay, so there was a suggestion that the county can take that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to know more exactly what the what the statement is. Uh, that's that's just. There is a change uh, where. Is, what you might be talking about is there was that I think about, uh, like fire territory mm -hmm. where fire territory can uh, volunteer for our territory oh, yeah. can, can come I? to the county and ask for public safety yeah. mm -hmm. and the council has the ability to give that to them and it is off the top mm -hmm. so like say that's what happened with tri township i think is what he's yeah. talking okay. about so i can what could happen is if you because they're a fire territory fire territory that company district. and say that you want they want a hundred thousand dollars you know let's say $900,000 for a fire truck, um, and you agree to that, you would get the $900,000 off the top, and then what's left 
gets distributed to the county and to the cities and towns. So that's probably what a lot of cities and towns do not like because it gives you the authority to take away money that should could go to this. So we can't take away individual, we can't take their money away, but we can take our combined the, money the, away. The, the original allocation before it's distributed before to everyone. Distributed. Okay. Yeah. That's probably what they you may have heard. Yeah, well I don't know. I just I, I just thought that was a good question. Yeah. It was out there and I thought it, and there the original person the original uh, legislation was that in seven, <coughs> if one of those units came to you, you had to give them the money. And luckily that got changed at the end that says you can give it to them. Okay. So but that's something from a county's perspective you want to be on top of because you won't be forced to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Thank you for that. I, I, once again, once again, God bless you guys for giving us this information. I know I asked some silly questions and do some strange stuff, but some of the stuff is from people that are asking me or I'm talking to people and it's just basic stuff that I need to know and they need to know. So that's why I'm going and the last two pages are just your outstanding debt. So you have the um, the jail bonds and the uh, tip uh, bonds. So just for reference, those are the amortization schedules. Do you so know what our two tips uh, the first one districts first one. are? So I guess the uh, Austin Chart yeah. and then the um, uh, the uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's for the utility. Uh, I want to say Synergy Metronet, but it's not Synergy Metronet. It's the uh, fiber optics. <coughs> is it Jackson Oriented? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the tip here, but it, it's covered all that investment that they they made in fiber optics. It's not generating a whole lot of revenue right now. Yeah, like a couple thousand dollars. Well, I have one other question. Where are all the red arrows on the graphs? Uh, well, we 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 save we save the uh, caller to the final report. <laughs> okay, okay. We, we save the uh, we save all the pictures to the final yeah. report. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I was. I, 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 I'm just looking at the list. At least keeping the list. Vince got into this. She's going to look into the list here. I guess for updating it, do. You, Overall, would you like us to look at the budgets that have been historically underspent and base those expenditures on historical spending? I think that would yeah. be yeah. like a ninety percent. Yeah, mm -hmm. would you a like to, refer to send you the additional appropriations that we've made? Are you up to date on them? Or um, I think I got the last that might was maybe a month ago. So there might have been a meeting maybe that's happened since I got the last set. So. That would be helpful, and and any information on that pension expenditure because <laughs> we could take that, that out if, if we can. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I can update that, and I can add grant. <laughs> and then adjust. Oh yes, and adjust it. I have this lovely piece. He, says it he does well, good paper. All the we don't like you, but he does. <laughs> well, I know Nobody for a lot of you, this is the first time kind of going through this. I can um, yeah. I wrote that well, did you find this helpful? Is there yeah, anything yeah. else that you'd like to see yeah. different? Uh, we'd like to see more. And I said, Paige will use this <laughs> when she helps you through the budget, and uh, and I say we can update it. But uh, like I said, our goal is, you know. Once we finalize this, you can use this as your tool going forward as people approach you or you're looking at projects. And that's something when I did meet with the Redone Commission a couple months ago now. I mean, we, we talked about that there's some opportunities there, and so we had some good conversations, I think. Yeah, right. Good informative. I moved to close the, close the meeting. Okay. All in favor? You can close. I'll entertain, I'll entertain a motion to close the commissioner's side. I guess I'll make that motion. Make that motion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that. I'll second that. So, 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 so,